Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. Today, I will show you how to make a powerful battle mage build in Elden Ring, starting from the very beginning of your journey as soon as you wake at the Cave of Knowledge. This build guide is designed to show you exactly what you need to do and where you need to go to get the best possible items in the early hours of the game. This should make your playthrough very straightforward and extremely easy to follow. After all, a battle mage is one of the best playstyles in Elden Ring. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. The journey begins at the Cave of Knowledge where you can play the tutorial and learn the fundamentals of the game. I recommend this for anybody that's playing for the first time. Once you are ready to step foot into the dangerous world of the Lands Between, you'll be introduced to the first explorable area in the game, Limgrave. After touching the first site of Grace, head northeast towards the Church of Ella. It's difficult to miss since it's directly ahead of you, but one thing is for certain, try your best to avoid the Tree Sentinel boss. This powerful enemy is designed to show you just how weak your character is right now. But don't worry, we can come back and kill him later. You'll find some pretty useful stuff at this church. The smithing stone at the workstation, which is used to upgrade weapons, and some must-have items that you can buy directly from the merchant. You're a tarnished. I can see it. You know, if you can spare the runes, you should buy yourself a crafting kit. 500 runes will get you a crafting kit and a torch, two items that you should get as soon as possible. Next, if you head northwest and fight a couple soldiers on the way, you'll stumble across a pretty easy dungeon that's worth completing since the mini boss rewards you with the Flame Drake Talisman. This talisman increases your fire damage negation which will come in handy later in this video. Once you leave the Groveside Cave, head east and you will arrive at the Gatefront Ruins. There's a lot of NPCs to kill here which will help you acquire runes to increase your stats and level up your character. This is also where the first map fragment is located. Greetings are ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Shall I turn your runes to strength? Let my hand rest upon you. The main stats to focus on for this build is dexterity and intelligence, but I would highly recommend getting your strength to 12 dexterity to 18, and your intelligence to 23 as soon as possible, so you can wield the best magic weapon in Elden Ring, the Moonveil Katana. After you level up your character, head to the middle of the ruins and look for a staircase leading below the surface. The chest will contain an Ash of War that can be embedded into your weapons, and a whetstone knife which is used to add affinities to your weapons. Once you climb back out the staircase, directly ahead you'll find a new Site of Grace. Once you touch the grace, travel back to the Church of Ella, where you will find a new NPC to speak with. This way, Tarnished. May I have a word? I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Since this build focuses on dexterity, I'm going to show you how to find the Twin Blades. Travel back to the First Step Grace and head east towards these ruins. Pay very close attention to the route that I am taking here because there's actually two sets of staircases in these ruins. One chest contains the Twin Blade, which is what we are looking for, and the other takes you to a very dangerous place that you will not be prepared for. It also traps you there, disabling any fast travel.
The next map fragment is directly east from the gate front ruins. If you go back to the site of grace that you just discovered and head northeast, you will run into another church. This church contains a new site of grace, a sacred tear, and a wondrous physic. The Moonvale Katana is the main weapon we are going to be using on this build, and we want to get our hands on it as soon as possible. Now the Moonvale Katana has a special ability called Transient Moonlight that can destroy any enemy that stands in your way. Pay close attention to the path I'm following here if you want to know the exact location of the Moonvale. The dungeon we are going to right now can only be accessed through the exit. If you head into the Gale Tunnel from the front, the door entering the boss battle will be locked. If you leave the dungeon and follow the wind jumps even higher, you'll head towards Kalid where the back entrance is located. The Gale Tunnel is an amazing place to farm runes and level up your character fast. All of the mining enemies are weak against magic and you can wipe out the entire room over and over without ever getting hit. The goal at this point in the journey is to level up our main priority stats so we can increase our magic damage and wield the Moonvale Katana once we obtain it soon. Again, we need at least 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intelligence. After you farm some runes and level up your character, make your way through the tunnel and reach the very end so you can unlock the door at the front. Now even though you have access to the boss that rewards you with the Moonvale Katana, now is not the time to fight them. Ah, where did you spring from? This was supposed to be a dead end, I'm sure of it. If you travel back to the gate front ruins and travel northwest, you will soon be introduced to the very first boss in Elden Ring, Margit the Fell. Flame of ambition.
After you fight your way through the annoying Stormvale Castle, you will eventually get to the next boss, Godric the Grafted. Once you kill Godric the Grafted, you will be introduced to the next area in Elden Ring, Lyurnia of the Lakes. Straight ahead you will see the Church of Illith where you can find another sacred tier. Head northwest outside of the church and you will run into a merchant by the lake. I recommend selling the Remembrance of the Grafted, which was rewarded to you for killing Godric the Grafted. Me, I never really found myself using Godric's axe, so I decided to sell the Remembrance and level up my character. If you head back to the round table hold and you go to the back over here, you can speak to Rohir. And after speaking with him a couple of times, he's going to reward you with a weapon. Rohir's sword is already upgraded to plus eight, which means this weapon does more damage than the one you currently have. And it also has pretty decent dexterity scaling. Before you leave, don't forget to buy the Glintstone Pebble Ash of War. This Ash of War ability is going to do more damage than your Glintstone spell. Once you apply the Glintstone Pebble Ash of War to your sword, it's going to change your stats. And you can see here we now have 102 plus 40 magic damage. Now that we've killed the first two bosses in Elden Ring, leveled up our character with the necessary stats, 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 23 intelligence, and have applied the new Glintstone Pebble Ash of War to our new sword. Now it's time to go back to the Gale Tunnel and finally face the Magma Worm. You are one step away from obtaining one of the most powerful magic weapons in Elden Ring. So this is our build progress so far. If you look to the right here, my character is level 31, and for Vigor I have 15, Mind 15, Mind is going to determine how many focus points we have so we can cast spells. We have Strength at 12, Dexterity at 18, and Intelligence at 25. Since the Moonveil Katana is a magic weapon, it requires somber smithing stones for upgrading. You can fully upgrade a magic weapon 10 times. The first somber smithing stone can be found right here at the Limgrave Tunnels, right above the Dragonburnt Ruins where we found the Twin Blades. The second somber smithing stone is actually located at the Gale Tunnel where we found the Moonville Katana. This Moonville plus 2 Katana has 94 plus 15 physical attack power, 112 plus 36 magic damage. If you look at the scaling below here, it scales very well with intelligence and dexterity. The further you upgrade this katana, the better the scaling is going to be. Another great thing about this weapon, it also causes blood loss buildup of 50. But the main reason why this is one of the best magic weapons in Elden Ring is the transient moonlight skill. Sheath blade holding it at the hip in a composed stance. 
follow up with either a normal or a strong attack to draw the blade at great speed for an instant slash attack. Both attacks fire off a wave of light. We have Rohir's Magic Sword plus 8 as our secondary weapon with the Glintstone Pebble Ash of War. The Astrologer's Staff upgraded to plus 4. You can see here 134 Sorcery Scaling, B tier scaling for Intelligence. We have the Crimson Amber Medallion which is the item we chose when we created our character. And we also have the Flame Drake Talisman that we obtained earlier, which boosts fire damage negation. You can see below I have two flasks of Crimson Tears, and I have four flasks of Cerulean Tears, and the Lone Wolf Ashes to assist us in boss battles. Now that we have the Moonveil Katana and a solid foundation for our build, I'm going to go back to the first step site of Grace and finally kill the Tree Sentinel. The next place worth reaching is a Site of Grace located at the northeastern part of Kaled. On your way to this Site of Grace, you're going to come across some pretty dangerous enemies that I highly recommend avoiding for now. Your main goal is to get to this Site of Grace unharmed. The area that I'm showing you right now is one of the best farming areas in the opening hours of the game. You can sneak up on the small militia enemies in this area and kill them in one hit with your Moonveil Katana. Every single time you kill one of these enemies, you get 1,000 runes. After about 15 minutes of farming these enemies, I was able to obtain 50,000 runes to level my character with. Now is a great time to head back to Liernia of the Lakes where I'll show you an NPC worth speaking to and also the location of the next map fragment. If you head northwest, you'll come across a small structure in the water that has an NPC to speak with. Raya the Scout will kindly ask you to retrieve her stolen necklace. I recommend helping her out because she's the one that gives you early access to the Volcano Manor. And the Volcano Manor contains the best faith weapon in Elden Ring the Blasphemous Blade. If you continue heading northwest after speaking to Raya, you'll find the next map fragment that's located straight ahead. After unlocking this part of the map, you'll be able to find a small shack in the middle of the water. This shack has an NPC to speak with. It turns out that this is the NPC that stole Raya's necklace. I recommend killing him and returning the necklace to Raya as soon as possible. Thank you kindly. I am in your debt. Please, take this. Next, let's get the key to the Raya Lucaria Academy located right here on the map. When you get to this location, you'll see a dragon guarding the key. I wouldn't worry too much since this dragon won't attack you immediately, but I do recommend grabbing the key behind the dragon quickly so you don't get killed. Now that we have the glintstone key in our hands, we can go ahead and take a trip to the Raya Lucaria Academy and enter through the entrance. 
Please take your time exploring the academy. There's a lot of items to be found here, but the most important ones are the Somber Stone 3 and 4, so you can upgrade your Moonvale Katana even further. As you make your way through the academy, you'll reach another boss inside of the schoolhouse classroom that you need to defeat in order to progress further. Now that you have better somber smithing stones, I recommend going back to the round table hold and upgrading your Moonvale Katana as much as possible so you're ready for this boss fight. If you travel ahead, you'll run into a Carrion Knight guarding the entrance to Rinalba the Moon Queen. I recommend trying your best to kill this enemy because he drops you the Carrion Knight Shield, one of the best starting shields in Elden Ring. This shield has a very high magic damage negation, which helps to protect yourself from guarding enemy spells. A really good weapon to pair with this shield is a spear since you can guard and attack simultaneously. Right above the Dragon Burnt Ruins in this valley heading north, the Murk Water Cave has a small mini boss at the end named Patches that rewards you with the Traveler's Outfit, which by the way fits very well for the Battle Mage, and a plus 7 spear that's one of the best starting weapons in Elden Ring. It also scales really well with Dexterity, making it a perfect addition for this build. If you want to add some more spells to your arsenal, including the Scholar's Weapon Enchantment, that allows you to enchant your right-handed weapon with magic damage, head northeast from the Dragon Burnt Ruins, where we found the Twin Blade earlier, and you'll eventually run into the Waypoint Ruins, where you can speak to Selin and buy more spells. Now, we already received a Memory Stone from killing Radagon at the Academy, but you can quickly pick up one more at the Round Table Hold. Memory Stones increase your spell capacity, so the more Memory Stones you have, the more spells you can cast. If you head to the back where the Twin Maidens are located, you should be able to purchase an additional Memory Stone for 3,000 runes. Now, I have to show you where to find the Meteorite Staff, the best starting staff in Elden Ring. The staff is very easy to find, and it also has S-tier scaling for intelligence, which means your spells are going to do more damage. It also increases the damage of gravity spells, the Meteorite Staff is arguably the best choice for sorcerers in the early hours of the game. The easiest way to get the Meteorite Staff and also a very powerful gravity spell is to travel back to the Dragon Burnt Ruins, where you located the Twin Blade, to the east of the First Step Site of Grace. Now if you remember, I told you guys that this area had two chests, one that contains the Twin Blade and the other that teleports you to the Celia Crystal Tunnel. The whole purpose of getting teleported here intentionally is so we can exit the cave and head towards the Street of Sages ruins that are close by. These ruins contain two great items, the Rock Sling Spell down the staircase inside the chest, and the Meteorite Staff upstairs located inside of a small room in a window close by upstairs. Now we can finally take a look at the build and see what you've accomplished. If you look at my stats to the right here, I am level 42. I have 20 Vigor, 15 Mind, 12 Strength, 18 Dexterity, and 31 Intelligence. For my primary weapon, the Moonvale Katana plus 4, you can see 115 plus 21 physical attack power, 
and 137 plus 59 magic damage. For the secondary, we have a spear plus eight. I actually just upgraded this. The spear works very well with the shield since you can guard and attack simultaneously, increasing your survivability. This spear has 166 plus 32 physical attack power. For the staff, we have the meteorite staff. You can see here sorcery scaling 171 and we have S tier scaling for intelligence. If you look at the passive effects below, we get a boost to gravity sorceries, which is the rock sling that we just found. The carrion knight shield plus two that we obtained from the carrion knight at the academy that has 71 magic damage negation. My character is currently wearing the Perfumer's Traveling Outfit. This was actually found right where we were just at, where we found the Rock Sling and the Meteorite Staff. We have the Crimson Amber Medallion, which raises maximum HP. The Flame Drake Talisman, which boosts fire damage negation. We have three flasks of Crimson Tears, four flasks of Cerulean Tears, the Lone Wolf Ashes to help us with boss fights, and a must-have purchase right here, the Lantern which you can attach to your waist to illuminate surroundings. If you want to purchase this lantern, it's back at the merchant at the Lierni of the Lakes, right here at the Nomadic Merchant. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed this guide. I had a ton of fun making this video. If you want to see more videos just like this one in the future, let me know in the comments below what build guide you want to see next. If you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up would be very much appreciated. Thank you guys so much. And if you want to see more videos coming very soon, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also turn on those bell notifications so you are notified every time I drop a new video. The whole point of this guide was to help you build a solid foundation. You are more than prepared for your journey ahead. I have a ton of intelligence builds on my channel and this is a great starting point for you.